Hello. Well, hello. This is Adam Smith calling from NobelPrize.org, the website of the Nobel Prize in Stockholm. Is this Michael Houghton? Yes, it is. Hello, well, Adam. How, how nice to speak to you. Well, first of all, congratulations on the award of the Nobel Prize. Thank you very much. It's a great <laughs> honor, of course, and uh, I'm very, very, very pleased. Thank you. <laughs> how, di how did you actually hear the news? Um, my colleague in Alberta, uh, Dr. Tyrell, he called me at three o'clock in the morning and told me that I had won it. And, uh, of course, it was a big surprise and I was very sleepy. Uh, but uh, I tried to go back to sleep afterwards, but couldn't quite manage it. But, uh, and, uh, yes, it was wonderful. I think it's very sanguine to try and go back to sleep afterwards. I think one of the economics laureates last year, Abhijit, Banerjee uh, did that, but it requires some cool. <laughs> well, it, it wasn't too successful. I kind of dozed off and on, <laughs> so it wasn't a particularly good sleep. In the end, I gave up. <laughs> and then, of course, got on emails, and there's hundreds and hundreds of emails, which is all very nice, of course. Yeah, it's going to be a busy day. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's, an, it's an extraordinary story um, of people working together and then with your, um, your cloning of the virus and the development of the blood test in 1990, um, the ability to um, remove the danger of the disease from millions of people. It's quite extraordinary. Well, thank you very much. Um, you know, at the time of trying to discover hep C in the 80s, um, it was a difficult task. We didn't have the tools available then that we do now, of course. So... It was a lot of effort, actually, a lot of brute force, and just trying to use and apply all the methods available then. And uh, we must have tried 30 different approaches at least over uh, seven or eight years. And uh, eventually we got one clone after screening probably hundreds of millions of clones. So, uh, yes, I worked with some great people um, who, uh, without whom... Uh, I would not have had this success, and uh, we worked very hard. And mm. So uh, a lot of hard work and persistence was, was part of our success story, for sure. <laughs> when students hear that sort of story, they often ask, how did you keep going? What kept your belief alive? Um, well, you know, I got into uh, microbiology um, when I was 17, having read about Louis Pasteur's life and his work, so he was it was my inspiration, and uh, I think um, trying to discover a, a major virus uh, is kind of incentive enough, you know. I remember driving to work during those seven or eight years where we were frustrated for so long, and watching all these new hotels going up around it, around the institution that I worked at, and uh, I was thinking, oh, well, they just started this big hotel. I'm sure we would have found it by, by the time it's finished. But, but no, it was a, I think they had to erect about 10 hotels before we finally found it. <laughs> I'm left with this extraordinary vision of measuring the progress of research through the erection of large buildings. <laughs> it was hard. I was working uh, at a biotech company in California, uh, as you may know. And so uh, biotech companies in the States, they want results, right? <laughs> they, they have... They have investors <laughs> that give a lot of money, and uh, they want results sooner than later, especially in the U.S. So, um, you know, it was great that the company I worked at uh, was willing to work on it and to persist in funding it uh, and all of our venture capitalists and so forth. And I think uh, in a real way, it was a testament to the power of um, biotechnology, of the biotechnology industry. Um, but also, it was a lot of pressure on, on me um, to, to manage the program and to keep it going with um, years and years of failure, basically. So, yeah, I, <laughs> so I, I got pretty desperate. Surely we'll do it before this one completed. <laughs> <laughs> well, anyway. well, you did it. Indeed, indeed. And you're, no, and you're now working on the development of a vaccine. Yes, yes. Um, you know, quickly after we discovered the virus, we developed blood tests. That was the most urgent need to protect the blood supply. And as you said earlier, we did that quite quickly. And then, of course, um, <clears throat> the two big challenges were trying to find therapeutics uh, for the virus. And that took a long time. It took, you know, the whole field and the pharmaceutical industry working for more than 20 years. But eventually, uh, we've got these wonderful drugs now that can cure nearly everybody um, quite quickly and safely. Um, 
but it is a you know it is a epidemic global epidemic it is a pandemic it, hcv today it kills around 400,000 people every year as you put that in the context of covid which we're all obviously very concerned with that, that's already killed 1 million people so you know the way eventually you have to uh, control an epidemic like this is is with a vaccine after many years of work i think uh, our field feels that it is now feasible uh, at least a partially effective vaccine so yes i'm at the university of alberta i've been working on a an improved version that uh, we think uh, has has good chance of success or at least being partially effective that's exciting I, I i do hope we'll have the chance to speak about this at greater length very soon but no, I should let you get on. You've got, you've got so many people to talk to. So it's been a great pleasure speaking to you. Thank you very much indeed. And many, many congratulations. Thank you, Adam. Much appreciated. Bye-bye.